Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 135th scale US Marine Corps M60A1 main battle tank. The model that you see here was built by commission and belongs to a private collector. As I mentioned in my previous commission build videos, I frequently accept and take on commission builds from models ranging from 135th scale all the way up to 16th scale. For availability and pricing information, this information can be acquired by contacting me through the eastcoastarmory.com website or by contacting me through Facebook. A quick walk around the model. The model started off as this late 80s, early 1990s vintage M60A1 Rise Passive Armor Tank from the company Guns and Sanyo. The, pretty much this model is nothing more than a rebox of the Italian-made ESCI or ESCI M60A3 kits that were very prolific in the late 80s and into the early 90s. The models can still be found periodically on eBay or even you might still snag one or two in a hobby shop. They've also been reboxed under the Italeri name brand. The SG M68 III is known amongst M60 aficionados as being one of the better 135th scale representations of, of the M60 main battle tank. It features a lot of details that were ahead of its time and um, are a lot better than the ones that were molded in from say the Tamiya kit. Like I mentioned earlier, the model is from is a rebox from Guns and Sanyo. The Guns and Sanyo kits that were released in the late 80s and early 90s uh, added several white metal aftermarket parts to the model. These would include the air filtration system, the smoke grenade launchers, as well as the reactive armor that would have been mounted to the sides and the front of the vehicle. Of these aftermarket parts, the only parts that were used on this build were those of the air cleaners. The other parts were not used and were, uh, were replaced with other more modern aftermarket parts from DEF model as well as Legends. Unlike my other small scale model showcase videos, this model in particular received a lot of attention to replacing a lot of the parts with aftermarket detail components and accessories from various amounts of manufacturers. Here we can see the model just before I started constructing it aligned with all of the aftermarket parts that I was going to be using on the build. This model received parts from such manufacturers as Def Model, Legends, Armor Scale, AFV Club, as well as some bits and pieces here from Hobby Fan. All of the aftermarket parts that were utilized on this build were recommended and were requested to be used by the client. For the model's road wheels, all of the road wheels that you see on this model here are the aftermarket wheel sets from Armor Scale. The Armor Scale rest and wheel offers slightly better detailing than the kit supplied plastic wheel from Eshi sprockets were also replaced. The drive sprockets that we have on this vehicle are from DEF model and what makes the DEF model sprockets a lot better than the kit supplied sprockets is that the DEF model sprockets have the mud slits molded into the outer sprocket hub which is what we have here. These slits are intended so that when the tank is driving in mud the mud doesn't get trapped in the sprocket and can fly out. The model's Caterpillar tracks were also replaced. The stock Eshi kits have link and link track like we have here. Rather than using the link and link track, I replaced them with a set of T142 workable track links from AFV Club. I always had a distaste for link and link track and my opinion is the workable track links offer a lot, a little bit more realism and are actually a lot easier to put together than some of the individual or the Lincoln length 
that we see here on a lot of the older DML kits as well as the Eshi kits. One thing as of note, the T142 track that we see on this M60 model here was not the original design of track for the M60 series. The M60 originally had the large rubber chevron style track that was carried over from the M48 Patton. That track can trace its lineage all the way back to the Pershing as well as even further back to the M4 A3E8 Shermans from World War II. The idea of the T142 track is that unlike the rubber chevron track where when the, whole, when the track pad would wear down you would have to replace the entire track on the T142 was it was devised to be modular. This was that the two octagonal links or shoes that you see here would be able to unscrew from the back portion of the track and then you would just replace and swap them out with a replacement rubber shoe. This obviously makes maintenance a lot easier in that you just change a couple shoes rather than replacing the entire track. Another benefit of the T142 octagonal link was that it was non-directional. Unlike the Chevron tracks where the tank would drive by, you could look at the imprints on the floor and know which direction the tanks were moving. With the octagonal link, it's ambiguous. You're not sure which direction the tank was moving, which aids in concealing the movements of your tanks and your forces. Moving on, the models also receive lots of photo wedge update parts and resin update parts from Legends. These would include the auxiliary box here, which is both resin and PE, the gun travel lock, but more importantly, the fender mounts, which we have here running along the sides of the model's fenders. The Legend set gives you a very nice set of PE for this, and also has a resin mount, which on the real vehicle would have been casted into the upper hull. The resin, along with the PE, is a very nice addition to any M60 model and really helps the look of it. Another piece of detail that comes with the Legend set is a photo etch version of the Chrysler Foundry Super G, which we have right back here underneath the grill work. On pretty much every single M60 I've ever seen, the Chrysler Foundry mark would be mounted in this location over here. On the front of the vehicle, the Legend set also supplies you with a pair of replacement headlight brush guards. The headlight brush guards from the Legends are accurate in that it's a not a flat piece of plastic like the way it was originally on the kit. It's a piece of angle iron and also an angle iron support. These pieces are in photo etch and when I was assembling the model all these pieces were soldered together which leaves it a stronger bond as well as makes the piece a little bit more realistic. Also which was replaced was the model's fire extinguisher box here. If you notice the two handles are painted red as the way would be seen on the real vehicle. Moving down we have the tow shackle mounts. These mounts are simple resin drop-in additions from HobbyFan. The resin HobbyFan version simply swap on and improve the look rather than having the big molded in tow hook that are typical on most plastic kits. Also from HobbyFan are the model's rear tail lights. The Legends kit also supplies you with the photo etch and resin needed for the model's auxil auxiliary generator. Unlike on the Sherman which ran along the other portion of the Sponson, on the M60 and M48 series it emerged from the right hand side here of the upper hull. The snake part here is the original kit, however the, the mounts and the muffler end cap here are resin and are from Legends. The model's turret was replaced with the aftermarket turret from Def Model. The resin turret is very nicely detailed and does look well on the model. The turret itself had to have been slightly modified to permanently mount to the Eshi body. This was what was done was two locking lugs were fabricated underneath the turret out of sheet styrene and simply twist and lock on the way the original plastic kit turret would have. The DEF model turret gives you plenty of both photo etch and 
resin components, which are very highly detailed and are very and very highly recommended. The rear bustle bin that we see here is actually all scratch built out of brass and is all soldered together. It was used both with using the original DEF model kit supplied photo etch bustle mounts as well as the kit supplied or the DEF model supplied photo etch grill work. The support rods were fabricated out of brass and again the whole thing is tied together using solder. Also what was soldered together was the model's side grab handles. Rather than using the overscale plastic kit ones, new ones were fabricated out of brass and small brass mounts were also fabricated and again everything was soldered in place due to the permanency of the bond as well as making it easier to mount to the vehicle. Another nice addition was the DEF model smoke ejector mounts that we have here. They're very accurate and again very intricate to produce. The best way to produce them is again by using a soldering iron which gives you pinpoint accuracy as well as a nice strong bond. The turrets rangefinders here and here are the replacement ones from Hobby Fan. They are very intricately detailed and do feature the lenses molded in to the domes as well as on the commander side the small little hatch which would protect the lens on the inside. Another modification to the model was the addition of a turned aluminum barrel. The barrel that you see here, since this model is an M60A1, it received the original 105 millimeter gun. This gun here is missing the heat shielding which would have been more prevalent on the A3 model. I don't recall who manufactures this gun tube but it's CNC and it's very nicely detailed. The gun was fitted to the DEF model gun mantlet and the gun mantlet was modified in that its elevation was a lot higher than the kit original. This was a feature that was requested by the client. He wanted to have his M60 be differentiated from everyone else's on the market because pretty much everyone else's M60, the gun is a lot lower. In contrast, here goes an older M60 from my collection. We could see the difference in the gun elevation. This version here is the, the way the gun is stockly mounted. And this one here is with the elevation that was modified. To make the modification to the mantlet's elevation, the mantlet first had to have been modified by having some of it grind away. Once the elevation was set, the missing areas which were ground off were then re-sculpted with a two-piece epoxy, making for a seamless look. Typically, all these M60s that are built out of the box have this type of profile here. This, since the M60s that are always on the market had the canvas tarpaulin molded in, the guns were not maybe able to go up and down. So they came up with an average barrel elevation so that you could still turn the turret 360 degrees and it won't hit any obstruction, namely the rear engine deck, the way they tend to go up on these models. The model's jerry cans were also a DEF model upgrade and feature a photo etch jerry can holder mount as well as a photo etch nylon belt. The jerry can itself is the actually the rotomold type which replaced the metal jerry cans and this jerry can here is a resin aftermarket version from an unknown maker. Jerry cans themselves are nicely detailed and were simply just mounted to the DEF model jerry can mount. Also, what was used was the DEF model tow cables. Tow cables are also nicely detailed and were simply mounted on using the DEF model components that were supplied with the turret kit. Moving our way to the tank's mini copula, the M60 series, just like the M48s, featured a commander's mini turret, which is very similar to that from the M3 Lee. The 
copula that we see here is actually the resin upgrade set that came with the Legends M60 detail component upgrades. The, t the mini turret is very nicely detailed and was made to spin. Just like the turret, I added two small little plastic locks which lock the mini turret to the M60's turret like the way it would have been used on the original plastic kit. One feature that the client requested was to have the, tar the mini tarp with the interior detailing. To do this, the hatch was made to be functional and the interior det detailing was added. The interior detailing is out of the box from the Legends M60 copula kit and was very nicely detailed and was only just painted using a paintbrush. Since I made the copula hatch functional, I did the same thing with the model's loader's hatch. This way, you can either display the model with the hatches closed, or with the hatches open with a commander or a loader emerging from the hatch. Like what was mentioned, the model's air filtration use system was the metal ones that came with the guns and Sargno kit. The M60s are very unique in that they're very, they have an actual FIFL system like that from the Tiger I. The way the system would work was that air would be siphoned into the system via these two little nozzles here. They'd enter through the MBC filtration unit and then from there they would enter into the engine compartment which would be used for the engine. One thing, as of note, the Legends kit does supply you with the little glass jar that is positioned on either side here of the air filtration system. I'm not sure what the glass jar does, however, on the real vehicle there's a small little glass jar that's positioned, that is mounted in this little box here. It's probably a gauge or, or, some, or possibly to measure the oil if it's indeed an oil filter or an oil filtration system. To replicate the glass jar, after you're done painting the model, you take a small little drop of clear lacquer and you add one drop to each of the boxes. That small drop in the center replicates the glass. The model's painted with the Merck pattern, which stands for Mobility, Equipment, Research, Design Command. The Merck pattern, in a nutshell, was a standardized paint pattern for all military vehicles. This paint pattern would be able to swap colors so that you could adjust the pattern depending on your location, whether it be the desert, forest, jungle, or wintertime. The Merck patterns were pretty much a staple of the U.S. military from the late 1970s to the end of the 1980s, which were then replaced by the three-tone NATO camouflage pattern that was used predominantly during the 1990s and into the early 2000s. The version of the pattern that was used on this vehicle is called Gray, Se Gray Desert and utilizes four colors as do all of the Merc patterns. For the actual painting of the pattern, I went ahead and found on the internet the actual templates and the actual painting guide that was used by the US military. Below, I'll have a link to the website that has all of the Merc pattern templates for all the different vehicles that re it was used on from the M113 to the M109. Also on that website, there is an excellent color code with illustrations that will aid you in choosing the right colors for your build. And that concludes this Miles Showcase video for this 135th scale M60A1 main battle tank. Stay tuned for more build videos, stop by and like us on Facebook, and don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more builds as well as one six scale detail components. Thank you.